The next white dwarf syndrome we are going to discuss is acute posterior multifocal trichoid pigment epitheliopathy or APMTPE. As you know, we are going to start with introduction. APMTPE is an uncommon bilateral idiopathic inflammatory disorder. It affects young to middle-aged adults of both genders equally. There is a viral prodrome in one third and it is speculated to occur as a result of cell mediated immunity to viral antigen the exact pathogenesis is not known but it has been suggested that inflammation at the level of choreo capillaries result in hypoperfusion and ischemia of retinal pigment epithelium and photoreceptors associated cerebral vasculitis can occur but is uncommon and can cause stroke Erythema nodosum and other systemic manifestations of vasculitis has been reported. The clinical picture of APMPPE can be mimicked by other entities such as sarcoidosis and tuberculosis. Coming towards clinical features, patients present with symptoms of subacute moderate visual impairment with central or paracentral scotomata and photopsia. The fellow eye is affected within a few days or weeks. Headache and other neurological symptoms are common and can commence many months after ocular disease onset. On examination, anterior uveitis and uteritis are usually very mild. Uh, funnus examination, uh, <clears throat> multiple large, deep yellow white placoid lesions initially at the posterior pole as shown in the figure here uh, are observed within weeks the majority fade with residual RPE disturbance of varying severity subretinal macular fluid may be seen vasculitis and uh, papillitis are rare uh, but this the Visual symptoms and retinal appearance typically improve within weeks and long-term prognosis for most of the patients is good. However, there appears to be a subgroup of patients whose symptoms may recur and who have a, lo a longer period of disease activity. In 25% visual recovery is limited to 615 or worse as a consequence of retinal pigment epithelium and photoreceptor damage to the cobia. Invest, uh, alternate uh, diagnosis should be excluded and uh, investigations include HLA-B7 and HLA-DR2. Uh, they are associated in a substantial proportion of patients. OCT of the macula, fluorescent angiography of uh, active lesions shows early dense hypofluorescence and late staining. Now, this is shown here. The hypofluorescent of these placoid lesions is shown here in the picture. You can see this angiography shows that these lesions, they are hypofluorescent here in the early phases. And late phase shows hyperfluorescence here endocyanin green angiography demonstrates uh, non-perfusion of choreo capillaries as it is seen in uh, this figure and CNS imaging and lumbar puncture should be performed in patients with neurological symptoms. Uh, next would be treatment, which is not usually required, but steroids should be considered for patients with macular involvement. Steroids and possibly uh, cyclosporin uh, may be given for cerebral vasculitis. Patients should 
be instructed to seek medical advice urgently if neurological symptoms occur. So uh, this is where we are concluding the topic of acute posterior multifocal placoid pigment epitheliopathy uh, and we'll be discussing the uh, next by dot syndrome in the upcoming lecture. Thank you all.